Allah will send our prayers and blessings, his salutations upon his prophet and messenger Muhammad the one who conveyed a message and left us on a clear path. Today's topic is the great battle of bed. And this might take a little long, and please allow me because I always try to be fast. But this is a great topic that we need to um, learn. The Muslims were victorious against Quraysh on 17th of Ramadan, the second year of Hijra. They won the first war by dominating the Arab tribes during that time. Quraysh, the Jews, and the hypocrites among the Arabs want to retaliate by joining an alliance to demolish the new Islamic-born nation, but they did not succeed. How the battle started? Quraysh denied the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu by killing a number from the Muslims, torturing many, and the rest were expelled and they took their wealth. Doing all this did not stop those who embraced Islam, as some left for migration to Abyssinia. Then they made the treaty out of Al Aqaba. After that, the Prophet ﷺ decided to migrate to Yathrib, which is Al Medina, where some of the new Muslims have gone there before him to Yathrib, where all the Aus and the Khajrag welcomed them. Then they were called Al Ansar. At this point, Quraysh tried to desperately to regain any kind of victory by directly killing the Prophet. ﷺ. They recruited young men, one from each tribe. This way the blood of the Prophet ﷺ will be divided among all the tribes and Bani Hashim cannot take any revenge from all these tribes. The Prophet ﷺ was able to escape to Mecca and reach al Medina, where Quraysh on the hunt for him. They looked everywhere in, Me in Mecca and even the surrounding mountains of Mecca. Even though the Prophet ﷺ is now in al Medina, Quraysh did everything evil to stop the spread of Islam. At the same time, new enemies are joining Quraysh in Yathrib. Their leader is Abdullah ibn Abi Salul, who was in the process of becoming a king just before the Prophet ﷺ arrived to Al Medina. Quraysh is eager to get any revenge for their dignity after they failed to stop the spread of Islam and the migration of the Muslims as they will meet with the Prophet ﷺ in Al Medina. At the same time, the Jews were frightened and complaining at the prophecy of the Prophet ﷺ, and they were claiming that the new prophet will be a Jew. They would brag about him to the Aus in al Khazraj. Now he is from Quraysh. They disbelieved in the Prophet ﷺ, even though they know all his signs and descriptions in their books and scriptures. In this dangerous situation, as the Muslims could be eradicated, the leader of the Muslims, the Prophet ﷺ, have to balance powers and equivalent for the Muslim army. The Prophet ﷺ first started by targeting the economy, where their caravans would travel through Al Medina going towards Al Shah. At this time is where the great battle of Badr took place, 17 of Ramadan, the second year of Al Hijra. Quraysh clans, the battle started as the news of a huge merchant caravan traveling led by Abu Sufyan. Ibn Harb. It was mentioned that this caravan had 1,000 camels with everything of goods in it and merchants. There was only 40 men guarding this caravan. Abu Sufyan got a signal that the Muslims set out to intercept his convoy. He sent to Quraysh for help. Here Quraysh assumed would be the opportunity to destroy the Muslims and they should not let this chance go by. At this point Abu Sufyan told Quraysh that he has changed the direction of his convoy to save the caravan. Amr ibn Hisham, Abu Jahl, was encouraging Quraysh to fight and not let this opportunity pass them by, by finishing the Muslims with one strike. Quraysh set out with an army of 1,000 men, while the Muslims' army was only 314 men, according to the history books. The battle of this details, the Prophet ﷺ consulted his companions, which is the Muhaggadeen. And then Al Muqdad ibn Amr, may Allah be pleased with him, said, Go, O Prophet, we will follow you as long as Allah commanded you. <coughs> we will not reject you as the Jews rejected Moses. They said, We are staying here. By the name of Allah, we will follow you wherever you go, and we will fight with you until you gain victory. Here the Prophet wants the Ansar opinion before they started the battle, because the treaty oath they did with the, with the Prophet 
did not include fire, rather to protect him and defend him and not let him get killed while he was in Al Medina. Then he repeats, O oh people, let me hear your opinions. Brothers, can you give some room to the brothers to come in? Sa'd ibn Ma'ad, who was a prominent leader, replied by saying, It sounds like you, Prophet wants us. The Prophet said, Yes. So Sa'd said, Sa'd said, We believed in you, and we trusted you, and we testified that you. Was you came with the truth. We also gave you our covenant and our oath that we obey and listen by the one who sent you with the truth. If you take us along the sea and you enter it, we will follow you. Not one man from us will go back. We will not hate that we will face the enemy tomorrow. We are patient in battles, very royal when facing the enemy. Go forward with Allah's grace. May Allah show us, show you from us what you make your eyes pleased. Here the Prophet was happy and he said, Go. By Allah, he promised me one of the two. The Muslims came to Abar Badr, which is the woods of Badr, 155 kilos from Al Medina and 310 kilos from Mecca. As the army of Quraysh came to the same location, the Prophet ﷺ lined up his men and was insistent on them to fight with sincerity and good intentions only for Allah alone. And he began to invoke and supplicate and make dua to Allah before the battle starts that Allah would make him victorious against his enemy. Quraysh leaders came forward to fight the Muslim leaders as it was the tradition at that time. This, that's how the battle starts. Utbah ibn Rabi'ah, Shaybah ibn Rabi'ah, and Al-Walid ibn Utbah. They wanted to fight some leaders for the Muslims, all from one family. Utbah ibn Rabi'ah was famous among Quraysh for his wisdom and how smart and genius he was. He refused to fight the Prophet after the convoy was saved and, but he was forced by Abu Jahl who insisted on him to fight. A man from the Ansar came forward to fight these leaders. But Quraysh only wants men from their own clan who migrated to Al Medina with the Prophet. So he commanded the Prophet Ubaidah ibn al Harith ibn Abdul Muttalib, Hamza and Ali ibn Abi Talib. They set out and they faced these leaders and they killed them. Now Quraysh is confused. And they was defeated from within. And that confused their battle and how they're going to start the war. Soon the battle started and the Prophet ﷺ put out the news that the victory was for the Muslims by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seventy men of Quraysh were killed. Some of whom were leaders. Among them is Abu Jahl, Amr ibn Hisham, Umayyah ibn Khalaf, and Utbah ibn Rabi'ah. Some of them had ransom and 70 prisoners exchanged for bail and some for money and some were told to teach the Muslims leader and violin. And the rest was set free because they don't have any money to feed themselves. Their army was shattered and defeated as they went back to Mecca carrying a devastated defeat. Repercussions. The Muslims came out of this battle as a great power in the Arab Peninsula since they were targeted and chased. And their enemy never expected that they would be the strong. And Quraysh, if they want, they can swipe them out with one strike. As for Quraysh, they tasted a defeat that broke them in half. Their prestige has ended, especially since they were housed in Mecca, and they have the power before this great battle of Badr. And they thought that they will never be defeated. Their leaders got killed in a battle whose army is only 340 men. In the economy-wise, the Muslims was in control of it. They can block it any time. If they want, their caravans would travel longer routes around Al Medina, away from the normal routes they used to go through Al Medina. As for the surrounding Arabs, they unified the group and planned to destroy this new power of Muslims that came out. Seven days after the great battle of Badr, the Prophet ﷺ gathered all the Muslims and went out to Bani Salum, who ran to the mountains and were afraid to face the Muslims, as there was a great power right now. This great victory that was in the great battle of Bed created new sect of hypocrites throughout history who claimed they embraced Islam just in the open while they recently used to be the enemy of Islam and hate Islam. They did this to benefit themselves and stay alive among the Muslims in Medina without being harmed, but they still have alliance with the Jews and Quraysh. Also, the Muslims had control over a wide ge geography area in the Arabic Peninsula in Mecca and north of the coastline all the way to Al-Medina. This had a great impact on the trade of Quraysh to Al-Sham. 
they started to plan for another war. Even though they were succeeded by defeating the Muslims in the Battle of Uhud, the third year of Al Hijrah, when the archers violated the command of the Prophet ﷺ and they left their post, Quraysh was not happy even though they won this battle. Soon the armies collided again and it was the conquest of Mecca, 20 of Ramadan, the eighth year of Al Hijrah by the Muslim army. Now, this is a lesson, and I'm sorry if I took too long. We need to learn this in our history and our identity, especially for our kids. We need to learn the companions' lives and biography, especially the Prophet ﷺ, and teach them how to be proud Muslims and know the history and where they came from, not losing their identity, especially in our time and in this country. Sit with your kids every night and teach them Islam and teach them the biography and the sunnah of this Sahaba and keep Islam alive from within, inside them, not make them defeated when they hear themselves as Muslims. And this is our fault. Another topic, if I want to mention how great the Muslims was, is today, for those who watch the news and they hear what's going on in Beit al-Maqdis, where the Prophet ﷺ ascended to the seventh heaven, and what's going on over there, and how our condition is today. Alhamdulillah. الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أخيرا ونحن نقول هذا الكلام وما قلناه في هذه الخطبة يجب أن تتحول بدر إلى درس واقعي لنا نحن لماذا قص الله علينا قصة بدر المقران ولماذا يردد هذا الكلام على مدى السنوات لنا نحن الصحابة أدوا بدر التي عليهم أنت أين بدر التي عليك أنت متى ستخرج من بيتك لتقارع الباطل الذي أخرجك من بيتك بالحق